chant uh, these verses, not quite knowing what is the significance behind that. Uh, actually, in the BJF, we have the three objects of veneration. So I will go through first uh, the uh, sentence. This is what we have just chanted. Huh? Salutations to the objects of veneration. Vandami Chetian Sapan Sapatane Supate Titan Sariridadatu Mahabodin Buddha Rupam Sakalan Sada. So he says that I'll salute uh, every uh, Chetia that stands in place. Sariridadatu, that's the relics of the Buddha. Sariridadatu. Mahabodin, you know what is Bodhi? Mahabodin. Uh, in Pali, sometimes they use uh, uh, Bodhi because of the parts of speech, it's grammar. Otherwise, it's Bodhi. Yeah? Buddha Ropam, or Buddha Ropa, Buddha Ropa, parts of speech. That is the images of Buddha's Sakla Sada. So that's what we, what we chanted. And now let me go through each of these uh, objects of veneration. First is Buddha Ropa. Taking it up from Buddha Ropa first. Now, uh, if you look at the early Buddhist art, that is in the BCs, or uh, these days they call it uh, before the common era, yeah. uh, the Buddha was not rep uh, represented in a human form. How do we represent the Buddha? Uh, we represent the Buddha in terms of a footprint, or sometimes an empty seat, or empty throne, a body tree, or an empty space uh, beneath a parasol. Parasol is what we say umbrella. So this is how the Buddha was depicted for about 500 years after the Buddha passed away. It was not presented in a human form. Which might be very surprising to all of us because when we look at the Buddha image, yeah, we say, of course, this is a Buddha image, right? Now, what happened? You see, um, you might not even realize that Alexander the Great had anything to do with Buddhism. Did you know Alexander the Great had something to do with Buddhism? Well, he came from Macedonia, Greece, and he started moving around at a very young age, even before the age of 20, he conquered a big part of Europe. All the way, uh, and even conquered Persia, uh, they say, we say it's modern Iran, and he continued his journey to Central Asia. Now, by which time, some of the soldiers uh, got married to the local uh, women, and they were quite tired. <laughs> they didn't want to fight some more. So they received a big pension and decided to settle, settle in Central Asia. So these are Greek Buddhists, because they are Greeks, and they were very um, inspired by Buddhism, so they became Buddhists. Now as Greeks, they are used to presenting their gods in human form. So the first Buddha image was made by the Greek Buddhists, and uh, what was the model that they made use of? They made use of God Apollo, because Apollo is like a sun. So the Buddha is a light. So they use the model of Apollo to carve the first statues of the Buddha. Isn't that amazing? So the first images of the Buddha was actually, uh, it looks like Apollo, the Greek god or the, the Roman god. Yeah? And now, at the same time, this was during the Kushan dynasty. Kushan dynasty uh, was based in Central Asia, in modern day Pakistan and Afghanistan. And that used to be center of learning for Buddhism. Very famous teachers coming from Pakistan. And also in Kashmir. So in Central Asia, during the Kushan dynasty, which lasted about 500 years, the peak was around the 1st century CE. The Kushan Empire, during the time of King Kanishka. And that was when the statues of the Buddha started appearing. And the Kushan Empire was huge. So it even stretches into India uh, at uh, Mathura which is quite close to Delhi, Buddha images also started appearing. Now, the Buddha image of Mathura will look slightly different from the image of Gandhara. Gandhara is in Pakistan, and the seat, uh, um, uh, so you have what we call the Gandhara Buddha images, and they're very influenced by the Greeks. Eh? So another influential Buddha image comes from Andhra Pradesh, and that is in southern India. So in three parts of India, as well as Pakistan and Afghanistan, they have statues of Buddha images in the first century common era. So that is when we first get the Buddha image. And of course, as Buddhism, Buddhism spread around, you will see that there are many different forms of Buddhism. So first based on the Greek statues, as it went to different countries, the Buddha started 
changing to look more like a local people. So, so here you have uh, Buddha images from different uh, parts of Asia. Some of the, these countries are no longer Buddhist, but the images uh, remain. And also, very interestingly, you have a Buddha image of, uh, from Malaysia. Can you see the Malaysian flag? Yeah, this is when the Buddhism uh, and Hinduism is part of the beliefs of the people in the, of this peninsula. Okay? And so, even if the Buddha images differ across regions, there are still some similarities in the images. For instance, the Buddha is represented with long fingers, a long nose, long earlobes, and a bump on the head with broad shoulders. And these are based on the 32 uh, marks of great, a great man. So they had what we call the characteristics of a great man, and the 32 characteristics. So they'd like to put these characteristics in the image of the Buddha. So although the Buddha might look very different, uh, when you go to China, Buddha looking different from the Greek Buddha, yet some features remain the same. Okay. Now in terms of the postures of the Buddha, there are four main postures. The sitting Buddha is the most common. And then you have got the standing Buddha, and the walking Buddha. This is very popular in, in Thailand and also the reclining Buddha. And so four postures of the Buddha. When the Buddha is seated, it's always shown to be in full lotus, that is one leg folded the other, right? Uh, or half lotus, okay? Half lotus, one leg over the other. And um, what is distinctive about the Buddha's image is a hand, you look at the hand. This is called the mudra, the hand the gesture. It needs a gesture, means something. Uh, you know, uh, this, this is a Buddha in Samadhi, Buddha in meditation, where uh, the right hand over the left hand and the thumb touch it together. Right? This is meditation, Buddha in Samadhi. Another one that we have is called the Bukish Sparsha Mudra. This is an earth touching uh, 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 Mudra huh? gesture. And when you came into the uh, BJF Center underground floor, uh, this is the Mudra that you saw, right? Buddha touching the ground. Do you know what is the significance behind that? Okay, now these are some questions that people may say are Buddhist idol worshippers. Uh, actually, the Buddhists, when we go before the Buddha image, we don't ask the Buddha image for favors, like the way to ask for prayers and all that. Actually, the Buddha image depicts the greatest the wisest and the most compassionate and holy man who ever walked the earth. So when we look at the Buddha image, we say, wow, this is a, this was a, a person born as a human being, but he's actually become the Buddha through his own effort. He became enlightened. This is an enlightened being. And being enlightened is even bigger than, better than becoming a deva. Yeah? And uh, when you look at the image of the Buddha structure, it always uh, exudes a calmness, the serenity, the composure that inspires all of us. And when we go before the Buddha image, we also recall the great qualities of the Buddha. So, alright, so the Buddha statue actually brings this inspiration to us. That's why people like to put Buddha statues sometimes in the office. Uh, sometimes they put it in the garden and all that, they do it like uh, some kind of decoration. Buddha image is not meant for the, uh, a decoration. Is meant to inspire us because the Buddha image symbolizes enlightenment, enlightenment and perfection. And uh, therefore, it shows the ideal of the, the, the of Buddhist. So when we look at the Buddha image, Buddha being enlightened, being perfect, we say that this is what we aspire to be, that one day we too become enlightened. We also become Buddha in ourselves. So the Buddha image inspires that. It tells us the vision of what we should be what we aspire to. That's the meaning of the Buddha, Buddha Rupa.